So why is this the first and final overland trip for Blanca to Colorado? Well, it's quite simple. It's a reliability, durability issue for me. So with the issues that we've had this particular trip, um, I just don't feel safe anymore with Blanca being out in the middle of the trails. Quite simply, whenever we go out on these trips and we go out into the middle of these areas that are away from services and away from people and all that good stuff, the last thing that I wanna worry about is whether or not the vehicle is gonna hold up or not. With the Colorado, we've had multiple issues since day one of purchasing it. The first issue came with the suspension. Uh, there was some kind of issue with the suspension. We ended up having to get new struts for that issue. Uh, the second issue was the AC compressor has been grinding and making all kinds of crazy noise. Now, it's been working, but it's been grinding, making all kinds of noise. It sounds like the clutch is falling apart or something inside is falling apart. I don't know. Uh, they have not been able to hear that and miraculously the same noise was present the last time we brought it in while it was out of the 36,000 mile warranty and they finally heard it. So that's like a $1,300 fix that I'm not interested in doing. Then this past trip here with the oil issue, I'm not real sure what happened there or how that happened. Uh, but it kind of is what it is. Also, since day one, we've been fighting with the transmission of the Chevy Colorado. One of the main reasons that I decided to go with the Chevy Colorado over the Toyota Tacoma is lots of reports of Toyota Tacomas having transmission issues. Whenever I drove both the Toyota Tacoma and the Chevy Colorado, I noticed that with the six-speed transmission, they had some shifting issues. Um, but it was more or less like trying to find gears. Now, both Chevrolet and Toyota will tell you that they have a uh, like some sort of intelligent drive system that learns your shift patterns or learns your driving patterns, and it'll adapt over time. Uh, the Colorado basically never did. It's always shuttered. It's always did you know crazy shifting and different things like that. If you're familiar with a manual transmission, you'll know that if you put it in say third gear and you really should be in second gear or maybe first gear even it'll do a, like a lug type thing well that's what the colorado does all the time now again this is a very common problem with colorados now that they have some age on them and again chevrolet will not do anything to fix it they say that they cannot replicate the problem however i can replicate it plenty the next issue that we have is the keys getting stuck in the ignition it's in park. Clearly it's in park. In park. Can't get the key out. I mean, that's for 50,000 miles? That's strange. So, how a key gets it stuck in the ignition, I'm not real sure, but again, whenever we did a little bit more research, we found that this too is a very common problem. The other thing that also had to be done is the like entire center piece here had to be replaced because there was something going on with the lights or something like that. So, you're talking about an AC control panel. This truck's only got 50,000 miles on it. Um, and you know it really disappoints me because one I tried to give Chevy the benefit of the doubt I was a Chevy fan growing up I got discouraged with Chevrolet back in the early to mid 2000s whenever they really had bad quality problems with their vehicles I went to work for Chevrolet in 2014 I worked for Chevrolet for a couple years and was you know really a believer that they were trying to come back and trying to make a name for themselves with quality the other thing is is the colorado just is a nice truck it is nicer than the toyota tacoma i know that that's going to ruffle some feathers but point blank and simple if you test drive both trucks the colorado will beat out the tacoma it just is what it is all in all we just had a bunch of problems with the chevy colorado um, we're kind of scared of it. It really, really sucks because we really wanted this to be our last new truck. We're really excited about this truck. Uh, we've already started adding some stuff to it. You guys saw with the rack. Uh, we had plans for, you know, tires and wheels. And yeah, so it just really sucks. But it is what it is. So I always tell people I'm a bit disappointed too because here I am years later with egg on my face after telling people for years that the Colorado is the better truck of the Toyota Tacoma and the Colorado. 
and uh, yeah, so it is what it is. I'm disappointed. Disappointed in you, Chevrolet. Oh, and by the way, I reached out to Chevrolet. Christy and I both reached out to Chevrolet uh, of almost two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. We're still waiting on the phone call for a resolution that was supposed to be that was promised to us within 48 hours. Both of us, two separate reps, two separate occasions, two forms of contact, same exact result nothing. I reached out on social media via Twitter, nothing. I reached out on social media via Instagram, nothing. I reached out on Facebook, nothing. It's clear to me that General Motors and Chevrolet are not in the least bit worried about taking care of the problems that they have. Even denying warranty claims all over the U.S. with other vehicles with the same exact problems. I'm not interested in doing business with companies like that. I'm also not interested in doing business with companies that go publicly to brag and boast about the amount of profit margins that they have per vehicle sale and then they can't take care of their customers. It's a shame. It's really a shame because it's an American automaker and it's really part of an American history. Um, I hope that General Motors gets their shit together. I hope that they start producing better vehicles. Unfortunately, I've had this hope since the mid-2000s. It's almost 2020 and they still haven't done so. It is what it is. So I just wanted to jump in and end with this. I understand that no manufacturer out there is perfect. I understand that all the manufacturers out there are going to have some sort of an issue with their vehicle. And I understand that they're all going to break down. That being said, what's important to me, and I think should be important to you as the consumer, is how the manufacturer steps up and takes care of these common issues. For example, Toyota is often picked on because they issue these recalls for their vehicles. Well, nine times out of ten, these recalls are voluntarily recalled because they see a part or something that has failed and they want to get it fixed as a customer satisfaction. Also, the reason that you don't hear many times that Toyota customers getting online and you know having such a really bad experience is because the manufacturer steps up and takes care of something if they see that there's a problem. General Motors, Chevrolet, not so much. I've complained, Christie's complained, others have complained. If you go take a look, all of these issues that I've had and that I've mentioned in these videos, these are not uncommon issues. These are very common issues. All kinds of people all over the United States, thousands of people with Chevy Colorados have complained about the AC, the transmission, the key getting stuck in the ignition, strut problems, all these different things. These are not uncommon issues. That being said, why is it so hard for General Motors to step up and take responsibility? I don't know. Hell, I would have enjoyed just a phone call back with some sort of an option or something. I appreciate you guys watching. Sorry I went on a little rant here. And stay tuned for what we replace Blanca with. Till next time, peace.